Good evening, good afternoon, good night, and good morning. Thank you for tuning in to RATV News Break. I'm Tyron. And Nicole with your weekly RATV News Break. Every week, Ty and I bring you news, trends, and more with a positive spin. For our first story, as the tech landscape continues to evolve, historically black colleges and universities across the country ensure their scholars are equipped with the tools, knowledge, and resources needed to thrive in the space. Clark Atlanta University has received a $11.8 million endowment for the creation of a metaverse hub. Eon Realty, a California-based virtual and augmented reality software developer, provided the school with the grant so that it could continue to so that it could con contribute to the knowledge metaverse. The hub would foster immersed and evaluated virtual learning experiences by merging technology and education. The Atlanta-based HBCU will also use the funds to provide training for students and staff on emerging technologies. George T. French Jr., who serves as president of Clark Atlanta University, says the endowment will instrumentally advance the institution's virtual education efforts. Quote, Clark Atlanta University remains dedicated to our scholars and equipping them with the best resources and innovative technologies, he shared in a statement. As we accelerate our momentum, these essential partnerships support our efforts to step into the future of interactive teaching and learning through relevant and future-focused innovations. Dan Lejesker, the founder of Eon Realty, added that ensuring HBCUs have access to cutting edge technologies will nurture innovation that transforms our society. Quote, partnering with a respected HBCU like Clark Atlanta University, whose graduates shape our world every year, demonstrates the impact Eon XR have on the future of academia and the sciences, he said. When a university with its commitment to social justice and deep focus on digital learning can utilize and add to the knowledge metaverse, the possibilities for reshaping our society are endless. I can't wait to see how Clark Atlanta University incorporates Eon Realty's solutions into the curriculum. News about the endowment comes from the United Negro College Fund announced it was teaming up with Deloitte Digital to create the online educational platform HBCUV. V staying, staying, staying. <laughs> Standing for virtual. That, <laughs> that's dope. Sometimes we get a little tongue tied. Yeah. Um, a lot of times. <laughs> I do. But that's pretty dope, though, because, you know, to even take, well, you know, since COVID, and prior to COVID, really, um, schools, whether it be HBCUs or just any other schools, have started the whole. Uh, virtual learning thing where you can do stuff from your computer mm -hmm. but now to actually enter the metaverse well I'm pretty sure there'll be like a digital campus yeah that um, would be so dope that would be dope because the possibilities are endless as far as what that campus can look like what you can possibly do on that campus um, and just the innovation in general um, with the whole metaverse I think it's just super dope so to bring that to HBCUs uh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm excited I'm wondering if it will even be like in the future where where kids will actually take or young adults I'll say take classes in the metaverse as well. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That that's eventually okay. at some point in time they'll be able the same way you're able to go to get on your laptop and log on to Teams or log on to Zoom or something like that for those who had to do it, you know, during you know, because a lot of campuses shut down during COVID. Yeah. So when they shut down, they had to have a different way of learning. So imagine now or 10, 15 years now, probably not even that far out, truth be told. Yeah. But imagine you're able to, you know, schools are able to give out virtual reality headsets mm -hmm. and you're able to attend class by just throwing on a headset sitting on your couch at home. Or, you know, you're able to uh, attend different events with other classmates you know, by just throwing on your headset in the metaverse because you're able to go to, you know, CAU, Clark Atlanta University, yeah. or, you know, a Hampton, a Howard, a, a Grambling, a, a Prairie View, or a Winston State, or A&T, or somewhere where you're actually just able to throw in your headset and you're actually literally immersed right there into campus life without actually leaving your home. And then when you're done, you just take them off and go about your business. Then if that's the case, I could see the opportunities expanding where you may be enrolled in one university, mm -hmm. but let's say there's another university that has a course that you're really interested in, but it's not offered at your own, where you may even be able to attend virtually. 
you know, at another school. That would be dope. That would be dope. Who Especially, knows? you know, if they're able to partner with one another and you're able to get those credits from, you yeah. know, from another school. Uh, that, I'm, yeah, I'm... I'm still, to be honest with you, I'm still a little iffy on this whole metaverse thing. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I got like one toe in to see what's going on, but mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I'm excited about the possibilities of, of what it offers, though. I will say that. Um, so we'll see what happens. Financially is where I'm interested in. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. They've lowered the prices of the whole, you know, getting the headsets so much. You know, they're like TVs now. Before TVs used to cost gotcha. hundreds and thousands of, you know, dollars for. 60 inch or 50 inch screen TV and now you can pretty much get a 50 inch screen TV for like two three four hundred dollars depending on the brand mm -hmm. they've lowered I don't know about you know lowered it that much but they've lowered you can get you know you can get a headset for 299 uh, from metaverse or meta or Google yeah. whatever they're called and I know Google had theirs but I think they dis oculus there you go mm -hmm. I know Google discontinued theirs but from my understanding I think they're they're revamping and revisiting how uh, they plan to go into the metaverse so I think that would be pretty, you know, so I think the prices will be fairly decent for people to be able to get in. And looking at real estate within the metaverse itself. But I know that's a whole nother conversation. Exactly. In our next story, Rihanna is now the richest black female musician and the second richest black female entertainer in the world. That's thanks to her appearance on the Forbes billionaire list for the first time. According to the outlet, Rihanna has an estimated net worth of 1.7 billion, with a B, <laughs> dollars. The Savage X Fenty founder, who, according to CNBC, uh, derived the vast majority of her wealth from her non-musical career, is not only the world's wealthiest black female musician, but the world's wealthiest female musician. She is also the second richest black female entertainer in the world, Oprah Winfrey, obviously, with an estimated net worth of 2.7 billion surpasses the woman born Robin Fenty in Barbados. Robin Fenty also Rihanna. CNBC also reports that her beloved beauty brand has achieved unicorn status. That is, has an evaluation or evaluation of more than a billion dollars, which only further adds to her net worth in the future. A quote, Fenty Beauty, which comes from the singer's last name, is currently valued at about $2.8 billion and was founded in 2017 by luxury goods giants LV LVMH. Rihanna also owns Fenty Skin and lingerie line Savage, Fenty, Savage X Fenty, which is worth about $1 billion, reports an outlet. And that's not all. <laughs> As Afrotech Afro previously reported, a recent filing by the company suggests that Rihanna and other members of the board are considering an IPO to take the company public. If they succeed in doing so, the valuation of Savage X Fenty could jump to a staggering $3 billion. I quote, the business maven has been working with advisors on initial public offering that could possibly take Savage X Fenty to a valuation of $3 billion or more. The banks that her company is said to be working with is Goldman Sachs Group, Inc. and Morgan Stanley. Other black entertainers who made the list including Tyler, include Tyler Perry, Kanye West, and Rihanna's former mentor, Jay-Z. Wow, and how old is she? Rihanna has to be about 27, 28. No, not 28. I'm sorry. She's 37, 38. I'm sorry. I'm doing okay. her. She's like 37, 38. Maybe. Maybe. She might be 35. I don't know. Good we'll have to Google her. that right quick. But yes, Rihanna is out here killing it. My fellow uh, Barbasian beauty, Rihanna. Yes, I'm, I'm a fan <laughs> of Rihanna. And my family's from Barbados, so I like to claim Rihanna as like a cousin or a distant sibling since obviously I didn't already got married and she's already doing her thing with old boy uh, ASAP Rocky since she's having the baby with. But gotcha. yeah, that's pretty, I mean, I think that's that's pretty dope that she's, um, she's 34. Yeah. Um, that's pretty dope that she's actually, you know, doing that though. Yeah. Very much so. And to think that majority of her wealth has come from her non-musical products. Yeah. That's, yeah. She, she's definitely commended for that. 
Well, yeah, for sure. And I, you know, I, I, I look up to people like her who started pretty much from nothing and have mm -hmm. created this this form of wealth, you know, whether it started with her musical career or not. But she, you know, knew more enough to or she learned more enough to, you know, become vested in other things such as her lingerie and her beauty and, you know, all of those other, you know, products and companies that she has. Um, they always say, you know, multiple streams of income is what, you know, gets you that that bag as they call it so she has multiple streams of income and she's doing it big so i you know shouts out to her her family she's getting ready to have that baby so that baby is pretty much set for life yeah shouts out to, to be next to oprah winfrey come on now oprah yeah. and not even 35 yeah. exactly that's dope yeah in honor of april financial literacy month we're highlighting kaden harris Kaden Harris learned and mastered the fundamentals of money management before turning 10. With the support of his parents, he launched his first business at the age of seven and released his first book titled Kaden's Rich Kid Guide at eight years old. Determined to spread his wealth of knowledge, the youngster often leads financial literacy focused seminars at local schools, churches, and community spaces where he teaches other children about investing, budgeting, and saving. For his next endeavor, Caden is taking his expertise on the road by creating a mobile learning center. Last year, he acquired a 54 seat passenger bus and he's aiming to raise $30,000 to transform the vehicle into a space where youth can learn about building a foundation for financial success. Caden has plans to equip the bus with a tablet station focused on stocks and investments, a mock bank that will teach children how to open up accounts, and a mock grocery store that will educate youth about budgeting money. Caden says the project will help fill a void in teaching kids money management skills. With this bus, I will go around to schools and events to teach financial literacy in a fun, interactive way, read a statement posted on his fundraisers page. The bus will have learning activities, tablets, TVs, and interactive learning experiences. Schools and events would have the bus come out to give students a memorial a memorable financial lesson. There are STEM buses around, but there aren't buses teaching financial literacy, which is the best tool we can learn to ensure we have a, secu a secure future. Efforts like the one being led by Caden are needed as research shows students who take personal finance classes are more likely to implement responsible money management practices in adulthood. Hmm. Congratulations, Caden. How old is Caden? Caden is now 11. You said he started this when he was 10, though? Mm-hmm. Good But actually wrote night. his first book at the age of seven. Good. That's... That's dope. Mm-hmm. That's... That, that's... I know I say that's dope to everything, but that's really dope. For him to have the... <laughs> for him to have the, the, the thoughts... And I'm pretty sure it came with some encouragement from his parents. Well, but um, for him to have the thought to be able to, to develop or create this um, mobile financial literacy uh, uh, facility, I'll call it, a bus, um, that he can actually take around to different schools and other different you know places and neighborhoods and so forth for kids to be able to jump on, um, jump on a tablet or jump into you know, the banking system. Because I remember back in the day, I don't know if you remember this, but I remember back in the day, um, specifically is more so in preschool more so than elementary school um, where they had the little uh, grocery store centers and the little banking centers and you would dress up and you know at, at preschool and you would play the grocery store grocery store oh, clerk yeah. or the banker or teller or whatever mm -hmm. that's what it sounds like to me so he's making learning fun mm -hmm. for kids his age but of course you know um, obviously he's if he's 10 or 11 with a little bit more of a spin up for for a little bit older youth. Yeah. Um, and I think that's definitely needed as, you know, a lot of financial literacy is not taught in school. Yeah, um, sure. And when it is taught, as we've learned for our own kids, <laughs> they don't like taking the class yeah. um, for whatever reason. They, you know, they like taking really it. It's really not interactive, I would, I would guess. I, 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 because it's funny if you and me, if I was a student, I would say because it's financial literacy and I would go, it's financial literacy. Why do I have to take that? Why do I know I how to count money, but not understanding that that's what you actually need in life more so than calculus and all those other things, which are more specialized to specific industries, in my personal opinion. 
<laughs> take it for what it's worth. Um, but I think, you know, I definitely think financial literacy is, is something that should be taught in schools. So for Caden to be able to do this and create a method in which it's not in schools, but he can take it to schools or he can take it to neighborhoods or take it to special neighborhood, you know, events. That's, yeah. that's, that's dope. And who that's knows dope. what's going to grow from this, um, you know, from his businesses and for him just to be not in even, even in his teenage years yet, the sky's the limit for him. Yeah, I, you know, I, I would I would hope that there are, I know that, excuse me, I know that there are other people also doing some things for financial literacy mm -hmm. um, that we've highlighted on RETV before uh, that, you know, are, are writing, you know, coloring books and other children's books yeah. for financial literacy. I hope they have an opportunity to um, maybe collaborate and, you know, put some awesome. things together. That, that too yeah. would be pretty dope and pretty awesome in my opinion. Very well rounded. In our last story, HBCUs are an invaluable aspect of black culture and education, but according to a new report, they're not all equal. College Census, a unique college rating website that aggregates publisher rankings and student reviews, has recently published its ranking of the 50 best historically black colleges and universities for 2022. The top 10 best HBCUs in order are Spelman College, Howard University, Florida A&M, West Virginia State, which I didn't even know was a HBCU. Me either. Okay. All right, West Virginia. Uh, North Carolina A&T, Grambling State University, Savannah State University, Southern State University, and A&M College, Jackson State University, and Norfolk State. Hmm. Nice top 10. Mm-hmm. And now I'm going to mention that why about the top 10 and all. It has nothing to do with where I went to school. Yeah. I quote, due to the tragic history of system <laughs> systemic racism in the United States, black students have long been denied equal opportunity to access higher education, says College Consensor founder Jeremy Alder in a news release. Fortunately, HBCUs give them this opportunity and open up the door for many more. They offer greater affordability, post-college preparedness, upward mobility, and a diverse and inclusive student experience. HBCUs are an excellent option for our students looking for a culturally relevant academic experience, continues College Consensus founder Jamie Alder. And, I quote, students considering HBCUs should look no further than this list. It's, a, it's the most comprehensive ranking of HBCUs out there as it factors in both respective rankings and student reviews. Interesting. But I am surprised that your alma mater did not make that list. So, <laughs> I'm like glad that you know. mentioned that. Because while that may be the top 10 list, Winston-Salem State, which I did attend in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, uh -huh. go Rams, is number 11. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so so we far. were close yeah. to actually top making 20. that list so yeah top 20 exactly so you got winston state number 11 tuskegee number 12 north carolina central 13 xavier 14 fayetteville state 15 virginia state 16 south carolina state uh, university 17 tougaloo college 18 uh philander smith college in little rock arkansas 19 and oakwood university in huntsville alabama um number 20. Okay. some of these i'd never heard of like oakwood oakwood I did hear Philander, I did hear Tougaloo, um, and again, West Virginia State, I had no clue that that was an HBCU. I thought that would, and that's an institute, West Virginia. I thought that was the PWI personally. I did not know that. I will have to look and see more about West Virginia State. But, you know, we'd like to definitely have spotlight and highlight what goes on with HBCUs, whether it's people giving money to HBCUs, some of the HBCU graduates. Mm -hmm. um, I know, you know, well, you all know, if not by now, if this is your first time watching, we also have kids that attended HBCUs. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to the fact that we want more of our kids, not just our kids personally, but kids in general to attend more HBCUs um, going out, you know, from their junior, senior years out of high school. So we'd like to definitely spotlight all of those HBCUs. If you want to actually take a look at this full comprehensive list it is collegeconsensus.com that's all one word together collegeconsensus.com uh, forward slash rankings forward slash best dash hbcu uh, but just go to collegeconsensus.com and i'm pretty sure you can just click through and find this uh, list of the top 50 uh, HBCUs because there are a lot more than just two or three hbcus mm -hmm. yeah. i say that because most people 
So when they think of HBCUs, they think of Howard, they think of Hampton, they think of North Carolina A and T, they think of Jackson State now that you know Deion Sanders is there or or FAMU. And notice quite a few of those schools are in the top list, um, but there are a lot more that are unknown also, you know, that, that are also in that top list. So make sure that, you know, if you're looking at HBCUs or you're looking to see what your major is in general, because I know that we've had to talk to our kids about that. You know, they also, they go to look at certain schools and just go, wait, there are a lot more schools out there that you can take a look at to see if they have the major that you're looking for or the activities or the sports or whatever it is that you're actually looking for. HBCUs definitely offer it. So. And also comes with scholarships. Exactly. So make sure you <laughs> actually go take a look at those HBCUs. Um, we thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of RETV News Break. Be sure to subscribe to the RETV YouTube channel and Facebook pages for more great news and shows. Make sure you also download or actually add to your Roku channel list if you haven't already done so, the RETV Roku channel. Uh, we look forward to seeing you again next week right here on RETV. Until, ne until then, be blessed and be great. Mm-hmm. <laughs>up in the church we saw a lot things that people refuse to talk about the elephants in the room mental illness 
sexual abuse, broken families, domestic violence, and so much more. The Big E, The Elephant in the Room is a show that sheds light on these topics. We're here to speak about the unspeakable.